years ago, in 1899, he requested the Presbyterian Board of Foreign Missions in Manhattan to open an industrial school for boys in the Philippines, in a location south of Manila. He would not take no for an answer, and gave an initial fund of 10,000 U.S. dollars to set up the school he had envisioned, to educate young people he would never meet in a faraway land that he would never see. The two dedicated <laughs> educators were Dr. <laughs> David Sutherland Hibbard and his wife, Laura, <laughs> a missionary couple that the board commissioned to establish and operate the suggested school. They were asked to choose a location in any of three provinces south of Manila. These are Cebu, Zamboanga, or Iloilo. Call it destiny. But while the couple was in Cebu, someone suggested that they do a side trip to nearby Dumaguete. They came, they saw, and were conquered, so to speak. The idyllic seaside town, the friendly and healthy people, and the able community leaders made the couple decide to set up the school in Dumaguete, which became its supportive host and partner community. Silliman University is now more than 117 years old. It is headed by its 13th president, Dr. Oh. Betty Cernal McCann. Installed in 2018, Silliman she University. is the first woman president, following 12 male leaders, three Americans, and nine Filipinos. Granted autonomous status by the Commission on Higher Education, or CHED, Silliman University is a CHED Center of Excellence for Nursing, information technology, and teacher education, as well as a center of development for biology, medical technology, and marine sciences. Silliman University has been granted institutional reaccreditation by the Association of Christian Schools, Colleges, and Universities Accrediting Council, Incorporated. Institutional accreditation or reaccreditation is the highest accreditation award ACSCU can give to an educational institution. Silliman's offering of quality Christian education ranges from early childhood to postgraduate level. Its student population of 10 thousand counts among the best performing students in the Philippines and Silliman graduates are among the most sought-after professionals in the private or public sector. In the Visayas region, Silliman University is a recognized leader in community service, a trusted partner of government and non-government organizations. It has pioneered several community projects in healthcare, agriculture, information technology, Christian ministry and outreach, law and justice, governance, youth development, calamity and disaster response, education and training, service learning, and environmental protection. Silliman graduates have established their reputation beyond the Philippine shores. They are valued members of health, business, engineering, science and technology, education, communication, research, and other organizations in North America, Europe, Asia, and Australia. Several Silliman alumni have distinguished themselves through the decades, excelling and leading in their respective fields. Notable Silimanians include Senator Lorenzo G. Tevez in public administration, DepEd Secretary Leonor Mantoles Briones in civil service, Dr. Quilopes Caballo in music, Dr. Julio C. in business, Dr. Angel C. Alcala in the biological and environmental sciences, Drs. Edilberto and Edith Tiempo in Literature, Director Eddie Romero in Filmmaking and the Arts, Dr. Romeo Ariniego in Medicine, and Dr. Rolando del Carmen in Legal Education, to name a few. Silliman aims to provide whole person education to every student through the interaction of five learning venues that it dubs as the five C's of Silliman Education the classroom, the church, the cultural center, the athletic courts, and the community. The classroom includes the university's academic programs, facilities, faculty, and methods of instruction. Silliman University's 19 colleges, institutes, and schools offer some 140 programs, most of which have attained the highest level of accreditation from PAASCO and ACSCU, two accrediting bodies recognized by CHED. The Silliman faculty is an assembly of highly qualified professionals and academics whose expertise is recognized not only in the country, but also in North America, Europe, and other parts of the world. 
Visiting, exchange, and adjunct professors from the university's international partners bring in global knowledge. Silliman faculty do not only teach, they model and they mentor. The church is the heart of the Silliman campus, and Christian faith is the foundation of Silliman education. Beyond developing her knowledge and skills, the student at Silliman develops her capacity to serve fellow human beings. Activities for nurturing the faith, worship, fellowship, and service engage the student year-round. Nevertheless, church activities are designed and organized observing spiritual inclusivity and respect for differences in religious persuasions. The courts refer to athletic activities and competitions. Physical activity is deemed as important as mental activity at Silliman. Facilities for different ball games, swimming, contact sports, archery, and rowing have been developed and opportunities arranged to explore students' potentials. Several Silimanians have ruled the courts in their time, such as Marc Javier, the lone Filipino male archer at the Beijing Olympics, archers Jennifer Chan and Lisa Ignalaga, and ninth grader Nicole Tagle, long jumper Simeon Toribio. Silliman has long been a leader of arts development in the country. Its programs in music, dance, theater, and visual and literary arts have produced some of the best artists in the Philippines. The Silliman University National Writers' Workshop, the longest-running literary workshop in Asia, has been ongoing for almost 60 years. Its founders, Drs. Idilberto and Edith Tiempo, are two celebrated Filipino writers in the English language. In recognition of Silliman's leadership in the development of culture and the arts, generous donors have gifted the university with cultural facilities such as the Claire Isabel McGill Luce Auditorium, dubbed as the Cultural Center of the South, and the Ariniego Arts Gallery. Social inclusivity and continuing involvement in the larger community characterize Silliman education. Students are challenged to test theories and principles through actual community work in service learning, an approach that combines reflection with participation in community-based projects to achieve specific learning outcomes. It enables the student to develop a more integrated understanding of theory, practice, and values. Students apply the service learning approach for community-based learning in business development, education, health care, legal management, disaster response, and environmental advocacy. Silliman University promotes a service learning approach to provide quality social engagement between the student and the community to develop critical thinking, civic responsibility, and leadership, as well as to strengthen the values of service and compassion. Come to Silliman. If you're seeking opportunities for growth and excellence in every dimension of your life, be enriched by its holistic and responsive educational program with a Christian orientation. Find yourself in a learning community of highly qualified faculty, dedicated staff, supportive alumni, and exciting co-learners. Feel close to God in the beauty and splendor of the Silliman campus. Silliman offers education for total human development. An education that is fulfilled in three ways. One, it promotes the convergence of knowledge from various disciplines and areas of learning. Two, it encourages inclusiveness as well as diversity. The acceptance of everyone who comes through Silliman's portals, regardless of culture, class, or creed. And three, it deepens the spirit of service and widens Silliman students' sense of responsibility to embrace their community, their country, and their planet. Silliman University, a prime Christian school
Before the webinar begins, rename your Zoom name to your complete name and department and or affiliation so that we can easily identify you. Kindly mute your microphone when not in use. Next, switch on your video if your connectivity allows you. If you have questions with regards to the presentation, there will be an open forum right after. Please type it in the chat box or use the raise hand reaction button in Zoom and unmute yourself. The session is video recorded. Recordings will be made available at the Silliman Online University Learning website. Heavenly Father, we come to you in this hour, asking for your guidance and protection to our virtual gathering today. We thank you for the gift of life, the gift of family, the gift of work, and the gift of friendship. We thank you for this great opportunity to bring us together in this session as brothers and sisters. Bless the committee, the facilitator, and the attendees of this gathering. May we continue to value and appreciate the true essence and meaning of life with the help of your grace. And as we go along to our discussion today, we humbly pray that you would deepen our understanding. Lord, enlighten us and give us wisdom every day. Forgive us for our shortcomings and remind us to always be mindful of the things we do in life. We offer our life and our decisions to you, O Lord. May this gathering today create a memorable experience and a fruitful outcome. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and our Savior. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our first of the four sessions that we will be having as our participants from different colleges and universities will share their experiences, their challenges, and tips regarding their journey with a portable learning management system. It is actually intended for schools with challenging internet connectivity. For the information of everyone, we conducted a one-week training last September 20 to 25, 2021 on how to use the PLMS. After that, we had weekly live consultations with those who might need help in using the platform. This is actually a CHED-funded project, and we have with us right now our project leader, Dr. Dave Marshall, and our PLMS team leader, Assistant Professor Jan Janice Forster, and part of our PLMS team is also Assistant Professor Larry Rehensha and yours truly, Assistant Professor Myla Jean Sardan. Today, we will be listening to a representative from Region 6 who will be sharing their PLMS journey and how PLMS was made useful in their school by the teachers as well as their students. 
This is part of our consultation and technical support to our participants who joined last September 2021 and to those participants who just relied on our tutorial videos. We, we will now listen to our project leader, Dr. Dave E. Marshall, for his welcome message. Good day, everyone. The pandemic brought by COVID-19 opened a lot of opportunity to all of us to conduct research and to augment teaching and learning. Schools have shifted to online classes, blended learning, but many schools are challenged due to poor internet connectivity. In a press release, the Commission promotes flexible learning either the use of digital and non-digital technology and thus does not necessarily require connectivity. Among the other activities, the Commission suggested also that take-home exercises and educational packet should be considered as part of flexible learning. Today, we will be hearing experiences and best practices of some of the schools who are implementing the portable learning management system. PLMS is a kind of learning management system that can run even without internet connection. This project is actually funded by the Commission on Higher Education with the main goal to assist higher education institutions in implementing portable learning management system as an alternative modality of flexible learning, especially in HEIs that are challenged with internet connectivity. This idea is somehow responsive to this pandemic time where flexible learning is mandated and the use of a learning management system that will run without an internet connection is the most practical and appropriate solution. We hope that at the end of this session, you will learn some experiences, some tips and tricks and other guidelines perhaps in how to implement, utilize and use the PLMS in our own context. Let me take this opportunity to thank, of course, our team leader, uh, Professor Janice Anthony Forster and his team for facilitating this uh, event. And thank you for the participants and of course our presenter this afternoon. And uh, I think we are expecting more presentations in the coming days as many of our colleagues in the academe will be presenting also their best practices or some tips, guidelines, and in general, uh, experiences in utilizing the portable learning management system. I hope uh, we all learn as we go on or as we move forward in the next semester or in the coming years, especially that we are uh, going toward the limited face-to-face. -face. Once again, thank you very much and I hope you will enjoy this activity. God bless everyone. Thank you very much, Dr. Dave Marshall, our project leader for the PLMS. And now let us listen to the words of wisdom and encouragement from Dr. Nelly Mistio, our coordinator for Region 6. Ma'am. To the esteemed members of the top management of Silliman University, to Dr. Dave Marshall, the project leader of the Portable Learning Management System, members of the PLMS project team, my fellow PLMS regional coordinators, participants of the open online course on flexible learning, to everyone joining this morning's virtual event, 
Good morning. It has been said that education develops a country's economy and society. It follows logically that educational institutions have a significant role in producing human capital that would greatly contribute to the nation's economy. The delivery of quality education has been greatly affected by the pandemic brought by COVID-19 to the extent that there were instructions, interruptions in the delivery of instructions in schools. With the advent of technology, however, we believe that no amount of pandemic can stop educational institutions in its delivery of quality education. The pandemic brought by COVID-19 is both a threat and an opportunity. It is a threat because it has led to the downturn of the nation's economy. And it is an opportunity because it has created a demand for the use of information and communications technology, both hardware and software, to continue the delivery of education. COVID-19 pandemic taught us to be creative and innovative. This is exemplified by our drastic implementation of the flexible mode of learning using different platforms to include portable learning management system. Various platforms can be used in flexible learning, but based on our experience, using PLMS for almost two years is an edge. The pandemic that we experience now may end soon, but the use of PLMS will remain. We appreciate and congratulate Siliman University for this initiative of having a noble project with the Commission on Higher Education, the PLMS, and for involving higher educational institutions in the country in its implementation. We believe this is one of the avenues of telling the academicians that there are limitless means of delivering quality education for HEI towards the realization of its mission. We hope everyone is inspired to continue searching and exploring the use of various ICT technologies and platforms in quest of knowledge and skills that will continue to fuel and advance the nation's economy and the society as a whole. From the province of Antique and University of Antique, Mayad Nga Aga and Kruhay. Thank you very much, Doc Nelly. And now, let us now listen to the sharing of experiences from Sir Cooks, Mr. Carnit George Cornova, a faculty from the Carlos Hilado Memorial State College. Um, we will be presenting actually a pre-recorded presentation of um, Mr. Cordova, but he is also here for the open forum after. Good day, everyone, and uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity to uh, share with you uh, my experience with uh, the use of uh, PLMS. Now, before anything else, I would like to introduce myself first. Hello again. I'm uh, Karnit George B. Cordova. Uh, a lot of uh, my colleagues and uh, my students call me by the name Cooks. Okay, Cooks Cordova is uh, my nickname. Okay, I'm with the Information Systems Department of the College of Computer Studies of Carlos Silado Memorial State College. Okay, so that's uh, that's me right there. Um, today I'm gonna share with you um, my PLMS deep dive experience. I call it deep dive because it was more of well, it's not really uh, good to say crash course, 
but it's uh, an experience uh, that is worth learning for my part okay? and um, where it has led me and where it is taking me uh, at this point in time okay so I would like to share with you first uh, a simple a short profile of uh, my school okay uh, Carlos Hilado Memorial State College or locally called as CAMC is a public state owned college so we belong under the state universities and colleges where our main campus is in Talisay City Negros Occidental Philippines now CAMC uh, provides a higher technological education uh, geared towards professional and vocational instruction where uh, students are engaged in training uh, with science, engineering, we have agriculture, aquaculture, uh, also industrial fields, as well as short-term or vocational courses. So that's the school in a nutshell, okay? Uh, our campus has uh, four separate uh, campuses. Okay? Our, our uh, entire structure has four separate campuses uh, composed of, we have the Alihis campus where our engineering programs are found and some of the vocational courses like automotive and uh, air conditioning um, courses are found. We have the Binalbagan campus where our College of Fisheries and Aquaculture and uh, the College of Crim Criminology is also based. Then we have the Fortune Town Campus where I am uh, belonging to uh, is responsible for the programs under uh, business management and accountancy. Okay, and. Uh, then we have, of course, our uh, Talisay main campus, uh, where all the other programs such as education, uh, arts and sciences, some of the engineering programs as well, and uh, IT courses are also found. Okay, so uh, from my end, I would only be sharing with you guys uh, the data that I have with regards to my campus, which is Fortune Town. Okay, now um, the Kamsi Fortune Town COVID response, I, I'd say most of us uh, responded this way. We were caught unprepared with the, the COVID. So we have to go with uh, data reporting. Uh, the first thing that uh, we have to do, even I think uh, SUCs and private colleges and universities have to go to the data that they have with regards to the approach to COVID uh, response in terms of education. Uh, in, in our case, we have to ask uh, our students around some information and uh, with the information they gave us, that is how we responded with regards to the implementation of our academic policies for COVID, okay? So I'm gonna be showing you uh, what we did, uh, just a quick one, so you'll have an idea how or where PLMS would come in later, okay? Uh, we definitely went with our student uh, population. Uh, in our college, uh, the College of Business Management and Accountancy or the CBMA, we have a population of around uh, 1,200 uh, students, okay? Uh, that is uh, without the uh, information systems because we belong with the other college, but the information systems program is also with uh, the College of Business Management and Accountancy. So we only surveyed uh, 1,200 uh, students. And out of that 1,200 students, 600 responded with our survey, meaning they, they uh, filled out the form uh, online with the use of the Google form, okay? So more or less, we got a 50% uh, size with, with the survey. And uh, with that result, here are what we uh, gathered so far. So who were the respondents? Well, if you look at uh, our graph 
here, okay, uh, behind me, you would see that uh, the College of Business Management and Accountancy is composed of uh, six programs. We have the BS Accountancy, Accounting Technology, Management Accounting, Business Administration, Office Administration, and entrepreneur uh, Entrepreneurship. Uh, with, with the bulk of uh, those respondents uh, coming from the business management uh, or the business administra administration students, okay? Then uh, it, we had the survey done across uh, four year levels and uh, the highest uh, response that we had uh, were those from the first year students, as again, you would see in our graph, okay? Now, we asked them several questions and uh, for us to move forward with the implementation of the no face-to-face -face policy that was implemented way back in 2020, we asked them uh, to gauge uh, their capability with regards to uh, the adoption of technology. And we asked them what are the devices that they are currently using for communication and this is the figure that we, we got from them you would see that uh, 96% or more of the students um, are using smartphones, okay? Uh, then they had tablets, they had laptops, they had PCs. Uh, some are still using keypad, mobile phone, and uh, very few are not using anything at all. Okay, so later this figure will again come into play with regards to uh, the implementation of uh, PLMS. Now, we also asked them, how can they access the internet? Where do they mostly access the internet? And uh, a lot of them said, 69% uh, said that uh, they are using prepaid to access the internet. So... 4% uh, are using postpaid, 16% are using, we would assume that they have uh, connectivity at some level, and 6.7% uh, have no access to the internet at all. So again, this data that you are seeing or these figures are very important in the decisions that uh, the school would be moving forward with regards to their approach to the, uh, to the uh, pandemic. Okay. So a lot of the students are using prepaid and we all know that most of the time if you're using prepaid, there's not much that you can uh, do with uh, your connectivity as well. And we also asked the students, what are the virtual platform, uh, classroom platforms that they are familiar with? And uh, this is the data that we got from them. All right. Uh, you would see guys that uh, almost 50 percent of our students when we uh, did this survey uh, were not familiar with uh, any virtual classroom platforms there are a few that are familiar with the google classroom edmodo neo lms even blackboard but <clears throat> you can see from the figure that they are not really uh, well versed or shall we say uh, well saturated with virtual classrooms even before the pandemic hit us uh, in 2020, okay? And we also asked them what would prevent them or what prevents them from attending online or virtual classes? Well, based on the graph that you see on our screen, you would see that 69% uh, uh, are linked to connectivity issues. They have a problem with connections. All right. And uh, well, you would see later that uh, PLMS will really play a vital role uh, in this data that we have. OK, so also, if you look at the graph, 23 percent, 23 percent are telling us that they have no budget even for connectivity. So you add that we have at least 80 uh, percent or or. Uh, shall we say 90 percent right of the students will have a problem with regards to uh connectivity okay so with all the graph that you have seen uh earlier what is the data telling us at this point in time so these are the conclusions that we derive from uh, those data 
Okay, here are some of the survey key takeaways that uh, we recorded. Okay, uh, number one, student access the internet through prepaid services. We have seen that in the graph. Okay, um, almost half of the students are not familiar or they have not used uh, any virtual cl classroom platforms. Uh, that gives them a disadvantage at this point in time because, uh, well, when you're prepaid, most of the time you don't, you're not gonna have any loads, okay? And uh, add to that, they don't have any experience with virtual classroom platforms. And then there's that connectivity issue, which is a major problem that prevents the student from attending online or virtual classes. And most or majority at 90% and above of our students are smartphone users, okay? So these are the, the major uh, data uh, figures that we got from that uh, survey. And that made us think actually on uh, how are we going to approach the delivery of uh, classes uh, when this pandemic came about. So, enter PLMS. Where does it fit in? Okay, so we go back to our data that uh, I, I showed you. And as we have said, the student access through the internet with the use of prepaid services. Again, what if they don't have a load? Definitely, they will not be able to join online classes, right? But with PLMS, uh, that's not no problem at all. PLMS as I've learned from our uh, training is that it's really built for offline uh, services or uh, offline work, okay? And uh, <clears throat> with regards to our students, uh, having not used any uh, virtual classroom platforms, um, this survey was done before the introduction of the virtual classroom, before we really uh, required the students to uh, get into the virtual classrooms. But eventually they, they learn. And uh, well, being in the younger generation, it's easier for them to learn new technology. And uh, with the PLMS, well, definitely it's not gonna be a problem because uh, learning uh, the learning curve for the students in LMS are, are very, uh, shall we say, uh, not that steep. So they learned very fast on that one, okay? And uh, again, the strength of PLMS with regards to connectivity issue, which is the major problem of most of the students, is not already uh, an issue, but was uh, addressed by uh, PLMS. And that made a big difference with regards to the distribution of uh, the PLMS to the students. So this three alone, uh was addressed thoroughly by uh plms and it it was in in a way uh shall i say a a good uh response uh with regards to how we should be able to give the the lesson the classes to the students but there's one thing that uh plms i would say would be a, a shortcoming okay and that would be it's not designed for mobile as what i have learned during our training so in this case majority of our students in kamsi fortune town are actually smart users they would prefer that the delivery of the lessons will be done through their mobile devices and sadly that's where plms fell short okay but uh should we scrap plms just because of of uh, this shortcoming well, the answer for me is a big no. Three out of four, that's still a very acceptable uh, implementation for PLMS, okay? So, how is PLMS doing so far? PLMS is a very proficient uh, learning management system based on my part, based on my experience, okay? So, how is it doing so far? Well, um, when after the training was uh, finished i right away jumped into you know maybe i can do this maybe i can implement plms with uh, with my class 
I, I only did a test implementation last October 4, 2021, and it was only done uh, with a few students that I have from uh, BSIS. Uh, number one, it's because that uh, BSIS students are already familiar with the technology. And uh, number two, uh, they are the only people that I have uh, direct contact or control with. Okay. And uh, test implementation because at this point, uh, when uh, I, I, I put this out on the table with the department, the first semester already started way back in August. Okay, so there's already that uh, contents that uh, we're following. Uh, I, I only got to test it with 10 of my students. Okay, they participated on this. Um, and it's going good. No? Actually, uh, what I did with the PLMS is I got my Google Classroom contents. By the way, in, in uh, Kamsi, we're using Google Classroom. I got my Google Classroom contents and migrated everything uh, into the PLMS platform. Okay, And uh, what I did was to give uh, that lesson on a full semester implementation, which means that I put everything uh, the entire semestral lesson that I have, I put that in the PLMS and I distributed it to the students. Okay, so it's basically uh, here's here are the lessons and just follow it, follow with it all throughout the uh, the semester and we're done. Okay, you come back and submit it to me. That's the approach that I did. Um, well, by December. Uh, when December came, I was checking up with the students already and I am getting positive feedback from the students. Uh, key feedbacks, positive feedbacks I got from them is that there's that ease of use and navigation. They can easily understand, well, maybe because they are information system students or I, uh, technology students. So it's kind of easy for them to navigate and to use. As I mentioned, uh, learning PLMS is easy for them. Probably because they were already, uh, well, probably with the students nowadays, they are uh, well equipped or shall we say ready with the technology. And uh, they also told me that uh, the content structure of uh, PLMS is very diverse. They think it's way better than the Google Classroom because with the Google Classroom, we've uh, hit a snag uh, when it comes to creating quizzes and uh, some other deliverables right so those are the positive feedbacks that uh, i got from those students the negative feedback i got from the students were the following well <laughs> we all know what happened last december right typhoon that happened and uh sadly five out of those 10 students who participated in this test implementation lost their computers or had their flash drives uh, washed away or got wet so uh, that's gonna be an issue on on my part and uh, two of those students uh, forgot to back up their PLMS uh, so much so that uh, they had to uh, restart again <laughs> by uh, early January they had to restart from the beginning because uh, well they failed to back up and uh, also they lost their their data okay so those are the things that uh, we have encountered so far with plms um well i would still i am still expecting five out of ten uh it's a 50 percent uh submission rate from my students uh this coming february 4 so they will be submitting uh, their uh, work uh this february 4 okay so what are the challenges that uh, PLMS are facing right now with uh, my implementation, with uh, my experience? Well, we, I call it uh, here, I call it the PLMS conundrum, the portability logistical mastery saturation conundrum. What are this? Well, number one, majority of our students in Kamsi Fortune Town are smartphone users, right? And based on my training last September, uh, there's still that issue of portability for, for mobile devices. Uh, I think uh, Siliman is still working on uh, 
the the work around for that issue okay how they can make it run uh with the smartphones okay how to store data probably and to implement that in the smartphones uh that's one another uh, thing that i experience uh, with the plms is the students residence proximity all right uh, our campus is here in bacolod but i have students living as far as uh sipalay and uh, as far uh, down south and uh, as far as escalante down up north okay and uh well that's gonna be an issue because uh, with the pandemic right now and we don't tell the students to come to school uh, we are also in that uh, you know same boat as to how can we deliver that uh, education for our students uh, with the proximity of the residences then we're talking about logistical issues how will the students submit the flash drive how are we going to distribute the flash drive uh, last October uh, it was still okay uh, well, on my part, it's okay because uh, my students are just here within Bacolod. Okay, but what if we go full scale on this and we have students, as I've mentioned, uh, as far as down south and up north. Okay, so that's going to be another issue that uh, we need to think about when implementing PLMS. Okay, S uh, setup and configuration issues. Just like when we started with the training, some of our uh, participants, I, I guess you uh, experienced that, had issues uh, with their PCs. In my case, with the students, since they are learning programming, they are installing uh, virtual servers uh, in their computers. And uh, that has come into conflict with the versions of uh, XAMP. Technically, uh, I'm talking about technical issues here. Uh, issues with the XAMP implementation with uh, their current uh, system setup. So that also, uh, in I think one or two cases that I experienced, um, it took us uh, a better part of the day to configure and reconfigure uh, their computers for them to run uh, PLMS. Okay, so that is also a challenge. Uh, also, from the teacher's perspective, there are now too many learning management systems that are out there. Okay. When this pandemic started way back in 2020, uh, Google Classroom was implemented in our campus, uh, campus-wide. And uh, we've been using Google Classroom uh, since then. And uh, I was one of those teams uh, tasked to, uh, you know, tutor, to teach, to share with the teachers, uh, with the fellow faculty who are non-IT, uh, the Google Classroom and uh, sadly the the reception was not that very good okay and uh, as I, I would really tell you guys that uh, you know especially with the older generation and the people probably they they are not really comfortable with technology uh, acceptance ratio was very dismal so much so that we had a hard time really pushing the teachers to adopt Google Classroom uh, others reverted back to modular uh, teaching and that also uh, experienced some issues uh, with uh, this learning management systems coming in and out of the wall uh, faculty learning curve was becoming steep and uh, just even learning google classroom was already a big issue for a lot of teachers and uh, that was uh, the problem that we encountered when we were sharing with them uh, Google Classroom. And uh, now, the second semester, our school will be shifting to new LMS. And again, that is another thing that uh, you know we need to iron out. I am again part of the team to. Uh, train the teachers on how to use new LMS and this time uh, well we are already uh, hitting some uh, potholes <laughs> along the way but uh, well they say with technology we have to move on so with uh, where does PLMS fit in here with the Google Classroom with the new LMS and the PLMS I think 
um, teachers are you know already bombarded with a lot of things uh, on their hands to to learn not much with the students because they are very adaptable it's the teachers that i'm quite worried uh, for them to learn to shift from one learning management to another and then introduce another one it's not that they are uh shall we say ambidextrous uh now maybe with age but it's gonna be an issue okay so in my part uh how did we how did i prepare for plms i would like to share you some uh, tips that i've learned along the way even with the use of uh, google classroom uh when i integrated plms when i used plms i call this the plms preparing learning materials smartly okay and here are some of my tips number one create a storyboard for your lesson contents it's very good and it's very nice if you would be able to create a storyboard you know where you're going at this point in time storyboarding will give you a bigger picture or a better picture of where you're going throughout the lessons uh, for the entire semester so storyboard is important then prepare your course blueprint and course calendar for the semester maybe it's just me i'm uh, quite uh oh when it comes to preparing my lessons i have my own uh, i make my own uh, course blueprint and course calendar uh, which i integrate with my storyboard when i prepare the lessons so probably it would help you if you have your course blueprint and course calendar with you uh, download all your video and uh, audio materials all right since we are giving uh, this is an offline uh, learning management system for our students it would be better if you already start downloading everything okay and uh, put them in a re repository for for you to access okay then prepare the, the documents in Word, type everything in Word, and convert them in PDF so that the students will not be able to, you know, destroy the files in the process. Except for the file submission. Uh, I have assignments that they need to fill out the file, and I give it to them in a document format. Uh, compress your video files. One thing I've learned along the way, when you download videos from YouTube, uh, sometimes the videos are very big, and it takes a lot of space uh, within the student's flash drives, okay? So you might probably want to learn a new skill on how you can compress video files, okay? Not much with the audio files. Uh, set all modules to visible, but hide the non-current lessons so that the students will have an idea what are the modules that they will be seeing all throughout the semester. Uh, show it to them, but don't show them all the contents at once. They might get a headache out of that. Okay, so what I do is uh, I put I put already everything there, but uh, my friend here is the calendar. Okay, I set everything according to schedules. Okay, so it's it's finished, it's done, but uh, I I just set the time, the day when it will be activated for the student to access. So your let your calendar do the pacing as well. Uh, consistently check up on your students, not just because it's PLMS. Um, I am in constant uh, connection with my students through texts or through calls. And I, I call them, I check on them. What module are they doing this week? Uh, how are they doing so far? Did they encounter something? It's very nice if you do that because you will have a hand on what the students also are experiencing, uh, even if it is offline. Okay, then run your PLMS as a student. Before I gave this to the student, I had to make an account of myself as a student. I want to see what they will be seeing uh, once I gave it to them because I'm not going to be there. Okay, so I run the PLMS as a student and uh, I actually did a dry run and uh, change the date and time when it will be activated how i would submit the file how i would uh, address the the lessons um, as a student it's, it's a good experience all right and of course if you still have time practice makes perfect okay so what i did from my part was i uploaded the lesson as a teacher log in as a student see what i can do from there see if there are any things uh, anything that the student might miss 
uh, such as the instructions. Then I go back again, tweak uh, the PLMS, the contents, log in as a student again. So you have to do a little bit of practice. And uh, I, I, it's not really 100% it will be foolproof, but it eliminates a lot of, of uh, hassles along the way. Okay. And uh, finally, um, how will I plan to share PLMS with the rest of uh, the system here in CAMSI? Well, I call this the PLMS uh, Pursue, Learn, Master, and Strengthen approach. Okay. Uh, this will be my uh, PLMS implementation plan for academic year 2022-23. Okay. Since, as I have said earlier, I have already started late. And, uh, well, I, I need to uh, prepare for this for uh, academic 2022-2023, okay? Um, I plan to have a, another survey, this time campus-wide, as to find out what are the fraction, the, the percentage of our students who are... Uh, not really capable of being online so we'll have a better picture okay and then uh, we are going to uh, i'm going to coordinate with our uh, institutional development center okay uh, these are the the office or this is the office in charge of training the teachers okay uh, we have the instructional material development office okay uh, curriculum and Instructional Material Development Office. That's our CIMD. Coordinate with them and probably plan for, for a training and integration of PLMS uh, with our uh, academic approach. And then uh, probably this summer, we will start training. We'll be doing it campus by campus. And then we will uh, let the teacher make their PLMS. Okay. Once the training is done, okay, go to your corner and do your PLMS. Then I will coordinate with the CIMD again, and we will recheck, okay, if uh, what the teachers are preparing are okay. Then before the semester starts, or on the first uh, week of the semester, we will distribute the PLMS for the first semester, okay. Then by the end of the semester, we will be collecting them, okay. And then we will evaluate uh, how it did, just like uh, what I, I showed you, uh, the experiences that we have, uh, how many got lost, how many we, we need to reevaluate them, and then make some adjustments, okay, in preparation for the second SEM. For the second SEM, with the adjustments we did, prepare again, distribute, collect it again, and at the end of the academic year, we will collate everything, all the data that we have from our implementation plan or from our implementation and then do a review of that, okay? And uh, again, uh, fine-tune PLMS if it needs to be done. Well, that's it. That's my implementation plan for the PLMS. And uh, with that, I would like to thank you for giving me your time for sharing you my experience with PLMS. I would like to thank uh, Siliman University for that uh, wonderful training experience. Really, it's a deep dive experience, but uh, it's worth learning, okay? And I hope that uh, you will give us more of this in the near future. And thank you for uh, being the beacon of uh, advancement in uh, the learning uh, strategies that you come up. Thank you again, and uh, God bless everyone. Stay safe, and uh, see you around. Thank you very much, Sir George, for that wonderful and comprehensive uh, presentation of your PLMS journey. So before we will uh, proceed with the open forum, let us now first witness the intermission uh, number prepared 
uh, by selected students from the University of Antique Main Campus and Tario Lim Memorial Campus. It's the Tinikling Dance and Baruyug uh, Binuyugan Dance. Considered as one of the most versatile natural resource of many products and crafts, bamboo is abundant in the province of Antique. Thus, the University of Antique is into programs that support and explore the capacity of these resources to grow and to be developed. As a university that advocates the sustainable use of bamboo and establishes a lot of livelihood opportunities for the communities in Antique, we then, as an institution, make sure that we uphold the university's mantra to build communities and transform lives. Bamboo does not only grow on our soil, but its roots breed deeply in our culture and our lives. It is an inspiration for its resiliency and its unlimited potential to become a form of art. Originated from the Visayas, a folk dance inspired by the rice farmers who usually set up bamboo traps to protect the rice field from a bird locally known as tikling performed during special occasions like Filipino traditional festivals. This dance is executed by imitating the bird movements while avoiding the bamboo traps. Together with the University of Antique, who black biped icons incorporated, performing the dramatic dance that represents the resilient and fun-loving Antiquenos and Ueans. Dati Nikling
earthen jars, clay pots, and other products made of clay are molded from the vast land of Barangay Bandoha or popularly known of its old name, Lupaan, of the municipality of Tibiaw. The University of Antique Tarulin Memorial Campus, together with the school officials and members of the faculty and staff, mold the youth of northern part of Antique. They prepare these students to become strong, worthy, and successful young professionals in their chosen fields. Further, these graduates become part of a group of people who initiate change and progress in their community in Tibiao and its neighboring towns and in the province of Antique in particular and in the Philippines and the world in general. Binuyugan is a folk dance that presents a group of young women from University of Antique dancing using clay pot. They use their skills and talents in maneuvering and balancing the pots on their heads while making fast turns, lying in the floor, kneeling or bending their knees.
Thank you very much, students from the University of Antique for that beautiful um, intermission number. And now we will entertain questions for our speaker. We have Mr. Cordova here live with us so that he will, he will, he will be able to answer uh, your questions or queries. You may type your question in the chat box or you may just open your mic so you can immediately ask your question or you can also click on the reactions and click raise hand icon so we can call your name and um, you may be able to raise your question as well. Do we have questions from our participants? So again, Sir Cook, Sir George, we would like to congratulate you for a very good presentation. Indeed, uh, you have experienced uh, all the, the different sides of the PLMS. And thank you for the survey that you have conducted and for the things that you have presented. So do we have questions from other regions? especially from the participants who are also uh, still learning the PLMS and implementing their PLMS to their students. So please feel free to ask your questions. Hello po, ma'am. Good morning po. Donna po. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am um, Donna. Um, I just wanted to ask Sir George. Um, I, um, Sir George, I, li I really appreciate your LMS, um, but it's just that um, uh, as I further listened to your <clears throat> um, presentation earlier, I realized that I believe this PLMS form you are presenting is very applicable only for junior high school, senior high school, and college students. Uh, and I really wanted to like... Uh, um, apply the learnings I have learned from your presentation earlier, but do you have any suggestions that we can like um, do in order for us to um, apply the same PLMS that you're currently working on right now to especially preschool students? Because preschool cannot uh, do, doesn't know how to use USB, doesn't know how to like operate computers on their own without the help from their learning partners. That would be all, but thank you. Hi, good morning. It's kind of a tough question uh, considering that uh, I've not had uh, any experiences with uh, preschool. And uh, for a long time, I've been uh, into the higher ed. So uh, definitely, I would agree that uh, the design of PLMS uh, is uh, designed for higher ed and uh, probably senior high. You know? But uh, one thing is probably, well, it's going to be tough because we need to teach the parents of of, of the, the kids to access the PLMS. Uh, so far, I, it, it hasn't uh, wrapped around my, my thoughts about uh, implementing PLMS with uh, uh, preschool. Maybe uh, Siliman can come up with uh, a simpler <laughs> uh, design for preschool. But yes, this uh, PLMS is really designed for uh, higher ed uh, programs. All right, but thank you for, sir. Thank you, thank you sir George. Thank you, Ma'am Donna. Uh, I would also like to call on Ma'am Janice Forster uh, to share her thoughts on this. And if uh, Sir Marshall, Sir Dave, I would also like to answer later on. Yes, Ma'am Jan. Uh, yes, uh, thank you so much for that question. Actually, in Siliman University, as you well know already, uh, we are fully uh, online. So even our early childhood preschool elementary are also um, getting their, what we call in, in other schools as modules online. So I guess it's just a matter of initially, I think the only the first step is the most difficult. It's just a matter of initially um, 
probably conducting a training so that parents in different uh, homes could also assist. The only difficult part in the uh, in the implementation of the PLMS is the initial installation. Once it's already installed and once the students get the hang of it, um, it will eventually become easier uh, and we will be able to develop a system within our ourselves now as a teacher also to make it easier for our students. Um, yeah, so I, I think it's doable. Um, yeah, so I, I guess we'll just have to create a training for our faculty and as well as our, our um, teachers, uh, parents and the kids in the initial implementation. And I guess once the probably the first few months will will take a bit of an adjustment, but after that, it will be easier already. Uh, I guess Sir Dave also has something to say, uh, but he could not uh, switch on his video. He's in another meeting. Yeah, good uh, Good morning, everyone. Uh, very quick, uh, sir, thank you very much. It's a very nice presentation. As to the question, um, well, PLMS is a, basically a platform, a platform for all, for all teachers, whether preschool, up to the post uh, doctoral post doctoral degree it is actually a matter of pedagogy just like any lms even if that is portable it is really designed for all um ako naman being a father of a pre preschool student or preschool pupil i feel ma'am that uh, that is applicable it is just a matter of how the teacher will design the teaching material to be put or to be placed in the PLMS so that it's going to be addressed like for the parent. Just like at Siliman, many of our many of our modules are basically like uh, teach a uh, parent to teacher type of pedagogy wherein parents are under supervision in all the times of the material in the online learning that we have. So I guess that is similar in a portable learning material wherein uh, teachers also will design, design the teaching resources to be in place of PLMS in such a way that there is close monitoring and guidance for the parents. So, but that's very interesting. I. So far, with our uh, implementation of PLMS, I have no uh, testimony yet from the kindergarten or from the preschooler. Baka ma'am, ikaw yung mauna, and we will be very happy to have that. Thank you so much, Paul, for the insight. I think there's also a, I think Dr. Nelly also earlier raised her hand. Yeah, when yes, that question was raised. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. Uh, Sir Dave, good morning and thank you. Actually, we used LMS in the University of Antique since 2020. And then um, I agree with uh, Doc uh, Marshall and Ma'am uh, Janice that uh, I think the LMS can be designed to all levels in the higher education, no? even preschool up to the graduate school. Because we have been do, uh, using LMS uh, since 2020 and all our students from high school, because we don't have preschool, from high school up to the graduate school, they are using this in the delivery of instruction, no? um, giving exams uh, to all year levels. Um, and then what we did, we conducted a series of trainings to all our faculty, to all faculty members. And then for the students, because they cannot go to school, what we did, we prepared an online tutorial uploaded the tutorial to the, the page for every college to teach the students how to use it, no? how to use the LMS. At first, of course, there is always resistance to change. But at first, there were many issues and we addressed all issues. All issues were addressed by the MIS. And then for the second year, we did not hear any issues in issue anymore regarding the use of LMS. That's why I said in my message a while ago, uh, pandemic may end soon, but PLMS will remain. No, either asynchronous or synchronous, whatever mode of delivery of instruction, we can still make use of PLMS. That's why I am encouraging as one of the advocates of PLMS. Uh, of course, Dr. Marshall was also our consultant when we had our um, LMS and make, made it portable. Uh, thank you to Dr. Marshall, no? uh, Dave Marshall. And uh, I hope all SUCs 
in Region 6, being the regional coordinator. I encourage you to use LMS um, on top of this uh, other platforms as Google uh, Classrooms and etc. I think um, there are features in the LMS which are better than other platforms. No? Uh, we can prepare the TOS. We can you can come up with the rubrics in uh, uh, giving your exams. You can easily record your exam. You can finish your grade in just one day with the use of LMS. So I think we have to continue with this, and this is a very good project of Siliman University together with the Commission on Higher Education. So once again, thank you, Siliman, and congratulations. Thank you very much, Doc Nelly, Dr. Dave Marshall, and Ma'am Janice for entertaining the question. Now, do we have other questions before we will proceed to the next one? So we also have another uh, inquiry from Ma Maria Teresa Sadigo Bernal. Uh, thank you for the invite to this activity. Seems this is a culmination activity of a training sometime September 2021. Is there going to be another training on the PLMS soon? Thank you. So our uh, colleague, Sir Professor Rehensha, has actually answered this question. So we don't have any training schedule as of the moment, but we do have uploaded videos, tutorial videos and PDF files on our, our soul. And you can just um, look at them and follow the tutorials there. Then you can also contact us to, so that we will be able to assist you. Okay, do we have additional questions for Sir George regarding his presentation earlier? So if there are none, then we may proceed now to the next part of our program. So this is actually the first of the four sessions that we will be having. Today we had the Region 6 representative, uh, Sir George Cordova, and then by January, uh, by February 12, we will have Region 9 and the BARM together with Region 10 and 13 and Region 11 and 12. And on February 26, we will have Region 1 and 2, Region 3 and CAR, and then Region 4A, 4B and 5. And then um, Region 7 and 8 is scheduled for March 12, because supposedly they're the first presenter, but due to what happened after the typhoon, that is why we have uh, moved their schedule. For the NCR, we will also still be coordinating with them and we will be finalizing and announcing as well uh, their final schedule in the coming days. Okay, so shall we now proceed? to the photo opportunity. For the others, you may um, still continue to register for the upcoming sessions that we will be having in the future. Okay, so can you please switch on your camera, everyone, so that we can have a photo opportunity. And we will have Assistant Professor Larry Rehensha will take I'm the going, picture. Can you stop sharing, please? All right. Uh, okay. We have just two page, uh, just two pages for today. Uh, please stand by. Page one. The second page. All right, thank you so much. Very good. Thank you very much, Sir Larry. 
And now we have come to the end of this program. But again, as I have mentioned, this is just the first. So we hope to see you again on the upcoming sessions. We have the scheduled uh, presented earlier. And uh, please don't forget to register ahead of time. You may also invite your friends, your colleagues to join us in the upcoming sessions. So the link is flashed there on your screen. Okay, so thank you everyone for joining and we hope to see you in the upcoming sessions. Thank you.